What is up, Fox Body Gang? Hey, on this video, it's all about the ATS Cadillac Big Break Brembos on a Fox Body Mustang. So stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss this one. Okay, unless you've been living underneath a rock using SC95 spindles to put on some big brakes on your Fox Body Mustang, now it is pretty much the normal thing to do. Or maybe you're just new to Fox Body Mustangs and don't know that, but it is extremely, extremely common to put SC95 spindles. That allows for pretty much ultimately any size brake combination you want to put on your Mustang. The stock Mustang has a lip on the, cal on the, on the spindle itself that prevents the rotor from going above, I believe, 11 inches, okay? so. To get anything above 11 inch rotor, you have to go with an SC95 style spindle that allows you to put on uh, the 13 inch rotors here from a Cobra and use all kinds of calipers. Now it's really common to do this setup. This setup with a 13 inch rotor, SC95 spindles, and typically use a Cobra style um, caliper that they sell at LMR, they sell in PD. Everyone sells these calipers. Okay, you can get them all day long anywhere. The SVE ones. Um, however, that is that is pretty much the most common thing. You see these all day long. But if you're like you mean you want to get something a little bit bigger and you want some big bad Brembos, four piston, two piece aluminum calipers on your Fox body Mustang. I know what you're thinking, Mike. I can't afford that. You can, and let me show you how it. A company called SNS makes this all super easy and makes it possible and very affordable. Now, if you're interested in just a five lug conversion and more information on what spindles to use in a Fox body, go back to my older video I made quite a long time ago on my blue turbo car and watch that video. That is more specific to the spindle itself and a five lug conversion. But since I'm assuming here that you're already done your five lug conversion and maybe you're shopping for brakes, I'm here to show you how to install the SNS kit and use these big bad Cadillac Brembos. Okay, first off, let's just talk about these rotors. Now, right off the bat, these are new. Okay, so these are new Cadillac ATS and CTS rotors. The ATS was made from 2013 to 2016, and the CTS was made from 2014 to 2016. You can get these anywhere. These are new calipers, they're not rebuilt. These are new Brembo calipers. You don't believe me? It says logo right there, Brembo. We also got the Brembo logo on the back. Now, interesting thing about these calipers is this was the first caliper to be used on a GM car on, in production. These are the first American-made Brembo calipers that weren't made in Italy that were produced for an American uh, car, in this case, the Cadillac ATS. The reason why people love these so much is because they're affordable. This is a production piece, and because they've made it on so many cars between 2013 and 16, they're highly available. So we'll go through every single detail, but I'm gonna tell you right now, I paid $327 for the kit. That's two calipers and the brakes and everything you need, except for the adapter kit that allows these to bolt on to your S95 spindles. And I'm gonna tell you right now, you do not have to alter or ruin your S95 spindles, meaning that when you're done using these, or maybe you don't like these, you know, whatever the case is, you wanna go back to a stock Mustang style, style brake setup, your calipers are fine. You don't have to ruin them, you don't have to drill them. The SNS kit makes this possible. We're gonna show you that next. So as you can see, I've already got one side bolted on here. I wanted to get it bolted on and just figured out how to do the install properly first before showing you guys. So the passenger side is done. We're gonna go do the driver's side. Okay, let's take a quick second to go over everything that I've purchased to make this kit work. So first and foremost, of course, I got a pair of calipers and a brake kit. Now I'm gonna send you a link. I'm gonna show you a link here on the screen um, from an eBay seller I bought these from. I believe these are $344 now for the pair of calipers and you get a uh, PowerStop Evolution ceramic brake pads for the calipers and you get everything pretty much you need uh, for just the calipers themselves. Now I paid uh, $327, so really a year ago, even now, they're still cheap, $344. What does that mean? Go to LMR's website and look at the SVE Cobra style caliper. That is bare caliber, not painted, um, just bare aluminum. They're $340 just for the two calipers, okay? So for $340, you get Brembo four piston dual. What I mean by dual is you've got two on each side because you've got clamping forces on each side. Now the Cobra style caliper is a dual piston, um, but it's a dual piston on one side, so you have a floating side. 
So that's obviously the one piece of the puzzle. So go to eBay, buy yourself your calipers here, $340, get yourself a brake pads with it for both calipers and dual set of calipers here. Now to make this kit work, the meat and potatoes here is a company called SNS Engineering. You can find them from a Facebook site, okay? They don't have a company website from what I could tell. They don't have um, you know, a phone number you can call. You have to go to Facebook and type in SNS Engineering um, and then click on it, message them, and then purchase it. Now guys, this is legitimate. A lot of people are using this kit. He's made it easy. It's a true engineering company. It looks like it is. It's a true machine shop, if you will. Um, so it's not just a guy in his backyard making these by any means. But again, everything you're gonna see in this kit is cut in half because I've already done one side. So just know that, but it's a really simple kit. It's gonna come with spacers for your wheels. I'm gonna to get to that in a second. There's a little detail there, the hardware here that makes it happen. And uh, yeah, that's it. Oh, and my kit, now we'll go over this in a second, so you also came with a drill bit, but the newer kits do not come with a drill bit, and they also don't come with press fit um, pins that locks these in. We're gonna go all detail of this, don't worry about that. Another thing I got to make this thing work is stop tech stainless steel brake lines. Um, this is a banjo fitting that goes onto the Cadillac caliper and will fit to your stock Mustang um, inner fender well here. So this is the number for this guy here. It's a 9504507 stainless steel brake line kit. Now to be fair, my car is clearly not running. It's still a project car. I don't have any brake lines ran, so I can't say this is gonna fit perfectly, but I have heard that these are gonna be the white ones you need um, to adapt this into your caliper, which I know does fit um, into your, your stock Mustang location and clip here in your inner fender well. Otherwise, that is it. Now, SNS Engineering knows what they have here. Clearly they know their kit and makes the install much useful because without this kit, you do have to actually drill out your spindle to make these fit, okay? So they know what they got here. This is a $175 kit, okay? 170 bucks, it was shipped to my door. I purchased this, all, in fact, I purchased all this back in January of this year. So I've had this almost a solid year. I'm just now getting around to it on Project Eager Boost to install it. But um, this is the gentleman's name. This is uh, Chris Salmon, or Salmon. Just funny, that's my wife's maiden name. Um, and he is ssengineeringllc at gmail.com. If you want to give him an email or if you want to order a kit, you could probably go that route too, just in case you, you know, maybe you don't want to use Facebook or something, right? So you've already done your due diligence. You already know why your SC95 spindles allow for bigger brakes. Um, just so you know, we're installing these on a car with 13 inch standard stop tech style rotors. That's it, they're drilled and slotted, stop tech from Summit. Um, and again, I source the SC95 spindles online used. Um, just so you know, there is a difference between 94, 95 and 96 to 2004 spindles. Um, you will have a different track width, okay? So it'll increase your, your wheels out. That'll push them out like by an inch, I think, on each side, maybe an inch and a half. It's, it's pretty significant. Um, so you wanna keep that in mind. It also puts the arm of your steering linkage in a slightly different spot. So ideally, if you're shopping for spindles, look for 94 and 95 spindles. Again, I go into all this detail in my video from the blue turbo car years ago. So the SNS kit either came with instructions or I lost them, but you can go back to their Facebook page and print it out. But since I've done this already on one side, I'm gonna show you versus reading the instructions here because it actually is um, extremely easy. Now these kind of like Brembo's already have insert in here. These are steel inserts pressed into the aluminum. Um, so the first thing we have to do is get these out because these are gonna go in place of them and offset the mounting positions wider. The Cadillac mounting points here are narrower than they are in SD95. To make up for the difference, you either have to drill out your SD95 holes, which we're not gonna do, or put these inserts on. That'll essentially space it out somewhere like that, okay? Now there's lines on here. There's, if you can see really closely, there is a marking on these that helps you line them up. And, and we'll use a straight edge to make sure that they're in line. But the first thing we have to do is get these out. Now, SNS says you need a 14 millimeter bolt to thread in here. I've got an extra 14 millimeter bolt. Um, that's how we're gonna push these out. So we're actually gonna thread the bolt into these and then just hammer it out. Okay, clearly another way to do this is to use a press. I actually have a press, but I found it easier. Um, and I tried this on the press, but I found it easier uh, just to hammer these out because these really had no problems. Um, Tapping out. Now don't be afraid here. I went ahead and positioned this over my vise just to put some load on the caliper itself, not all on the ear here. But we're gonna take a hammer and we're simply just gonna smack it. OK, 
Okay, that's how you get those out. Okay, I've placed the caliper on a block to kind of level it. Um, that way I can kind of get a better angle and show you guys where do you put these offset dowels here. So these are these offset inserts go in one way. Now their instructions are pretty clear on how you install these. If you look here, um, the idea is to create a line between the, the indentions that are pressed into these or machined into these inserts. Each one of these inserts has four indentions and I've highlighted them because these are the, these are good for either left or right um, but that's why there's four of them but you'll only be needing two of them. Now the two you'll be needing if you offset the hole to the corners of the caliper like this and in my case I've got dowel pin holes here. These are holes they've drilled into the inserts. Now if you buy a kit from them now um, I talked to uh, Chris yesterday he said that the dowel pin holes they don't long, they no longer offer uh, these with the holes in it um, and a drill bit. So they used to send this. My kit has a drill bit uh, to drill through your caliper here and insert a dowel to keep these from spinning. But he goes, we just increased the tolerances to the point where their press fit so tight that they weren't moving. And they also let most customers weren't even going as far as installing the dowel pins. But I want to go through and we're going to install the dowel pins anyways to show you just how it's done at least on this kit. So again, they offer this kit with the dowel pins and a drill bit. But if you order the kit from them now, you will not get that, you'll just have tighter tolerances. But what we're trying to do, accomplish here is and I've marked where the lines you need to uh, focus on here. Hopefully you can see a little bit better on camera. I've painted them black with a Sharpie. Um, but what we're doing is we're, we're angling the thread inserts um, towards the edge of the caliper. And in my case, the dowel pin holes towards the down inside edge like this. And what we're wanting to do here is align these top lines to the edge of your caliper up here. You've got a perfect straight line right there for your brake pads. Um, and then when that's aligned, you should have a perfect, perfect line between the two. Now clearly you see they're kind of moving here. So what we're going to want to do is get them aligned and just kind of tap them in with a hammer. Not that they're pressed in, just so we can get them kind of um, set in place. We'll double check the fitment and then we're going to bring it over to my press and I'm going to press fit these in. On the inserts you've got just a little indention here. So what we want to do is just make sure that we have a perfectly straight line from the bottom of this indention over here to this one. All right, I know that's hard to see. So that is lined up. Now, I learned just from this side, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. You don't have to be getting out calipers and um, you know going to the thousandths of an inch perfectly on the line. This bolt is straight up with no binding. It was perfectly aligned. I had no issues getting the bolts in on that side. All right. Once you've got these things tapped into place, now is the hard part. Now what we're going to have to do is actually alter the caliper. Now let me show you why. So it comes with bolts, uh, the hardware that comes with it. If you flip it over and you look here, what you'll see is a slight offset in the bolt hole. So what they want to do is make sure that before you press these in or hammer these all the way in um, to clearance out the middle here. So ideally, all you're trying to do is make room for this to go through uh, the other side and vice versa. Now, of course, they won't be bolted in this way. They'll be bolted in this way, but this gives you an idea on where you need to clearance it. Now, it's not a lot of clearancing here you need to do. In fact, this is aluminum, and it's really easy to do. You can use a Dremel tool with a carbide bit, or you can also use, um, in my case, a die grinder with a carbide pit bit, which is what we're going to do here. So, I actually... <laughs> I actually messed this up a little bit. I didn't mess it up completely, but I actually, if you can see here, I've got some marks here. Um, I had these all the way pressed, and then uh, because the instructions say to don't press them all the way in yet, so you can clearance this out without messing up the threads, I had to push these back out to show you this in the video. So do as I say again, not as I do, but I'm resting this here, not clamping it on. I'm just resting it here so I can get an idea on where I need to clearance it. So and it makes sense though, because if these are pressed all the way in, if you clearance this section here, what you're going to do is end up grinding into your threads, which you don't want to do. So I actually had to bring these back out a little bit. Uh, but what you're going to do at home is just, you know, tap these in and then clearance uh, your caliper here. Now I know what you're thinking. This is probably the hardest part. It is the hardest part, but don't fret. It's aluminum. It's very easy. You can even, if you wanted to, mark where you wanted to clearance the caliper pull these all the way out and then get yourself a file and you could file it down as well. That works. The idea here is just to make sure you have room for the threads to go through in the offset here. So again, much rather 
modify the caliper than my SC95 spindles, especially these, you know, they're not cheap, but they're definitely not the most expensive Brembo kit on the planet, right? Okay, so this is what I'm gonna be using. This is a old worn out die grinder. In fact, I'm surprised it even works. It's junk, look in here. <laughs> but we're gonna use this. Hopefully it lasts just long enough for me to clearance these. I've got a sharp carbide bit here. This is actually a quality uh, uh, die grinder bit here we're gonna use. And then we're just gonna clearance this out and keep test fitting the bolts. And then once I've got enough room, you know, to install these without it hitting the side of the caliper, we'll press them all the way in. Got some rain last night. Calypso got wet. Calypso cream puff over there. All right, get some room going over here. My press, I almost never get to use. All right, I'm just gonna double check my alignment here. Is spot on. All right, man, that is good. Okay, now you don't have to do this if you have um, the newer kit. Again, they said they increased the tolerances just slightly enough so that when they're press fit, they're not gonna move. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyways just because the kit calls for it, but what I'm gonna do is use this drill bit and uh, we're gonna drill through. We wanna go through all the way through the caliper here and that way we can put in this insert. That'll just ensure it doesn't spin, but you wanna drill all the way through so we have to get it out. We can hammer it out from the backside. So besides the difference in width of the ears here on the uh, Cadillac caliper versus an SN95 spindle, um, another difference is actually the offset. And what I mean by offset is what actually centers the rotor in the center of, uh, perfectly centered to your caliper here. Uh, if I were to just install this, what happens is your caliper or your rotor is going to be just a little bit too close to the inside of this, which means you've got one side. It, it, that is going to you know, wear, it's going to wear off differently. You're not going to have the same clamping forces on both sides. Um, so what you want to do is ideally, of course, get the rotor perfectly centered. Now what SNS has done to make up for that is they have given us a, okay, this is a 564th or yeah, 1.96 or two millimeter thickness plate to make up for the difference. Um, so this is required to go on to your hub first so that the rotor is been spaced out about two millimeters outwards and that centers it into your caliper here. Now, if you don't want to do spacers, now this to me is no big deal. In fact, you can see it's not even hitting like anywhere near the threads. This is a perfectly fit, perfectly machined little piece of plate here. I'm not worried about it at all whatsoever but it is necessary to run either that spacer or if you wanted to, you could technically machine your SN95 uh, mounting ears here down two millimeters. So if you wanted to not go this route, and again, I don't wanna mess up, I don't wanna do anything to my, my um, spindles here, but you could technically get your spindles here machined down to two millimeters. Um, that will make up the difference and also pull the caliper in versus pulling the rotor out. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, we're gonna bolt this down just to, all right, so that's gonna hold the rotor on while we can now hand tighten in our calipers. Be kind of hard to find the threads since it's offset like that. Okay, these, these bolts supplied for the SNS kit here is a 16 mil bolt. All right, hey, while we're on this side, you may be wondering what side is left and right on your caliper. Bleeds here are facing up, okay? So notice how the bleed screws here are facing up. That way, when it comes time to bleeding the brakes, you make sure all the air goes up and out of the caliper. So the other way around, right? All right, make sure you have some lugs holding your rotor nice and tight. That way you can check your clearance here. And make sure, I want you to note though, on how 
evenly spaced your rotor is, okay? And actually how well it, this 13 inch rotor fits in this caliper. Now one thing I do wanna make 100% clear of is that this will absolutely affect your wheel choices. We'll talk about that in the end, but let's find, finish this off and uh, put the brake pads on. All right, Power Stop Evolution Plus Ceramic Disc Pads with Hardware Kit. This came with the uh, the Cadillac calipers, but if you wanted to source your own calipers, you can get this kit. This is the correct brake pad. These are 17-1001 um, uh, from Power Stop here. So these are ceramic style brake pads for the Cadillac ATS caliper we have here. And what's kind of cool about these, at least on a new install, um, you can slide the brake pads right through the top and clip them in. So it makes brake pad changing pretty easy. So these are your brake pads. Now, one thing I will note is that with this setup and your Cobra style 13 inch rotor, um, you will have a little bit of brake pad showing, which means when you'll have wear, you're gonna end up wearing a lip in your brake pad. Now, if that bothers you, you're welcome to grind this off. So you can grind these down. That doesn't bother me. We're just gonna install these, but man, look at the friction area we're gonna have on these brakes. This thing's gonna stop, especially being as light as it's gonna be, but these are easy. Um, there is no left and there's no right. You just slide these guys in, one on each side. So your brake pads are held in place by these pins. The pins actually slide through the back of the caliper and through the brake pads, and that's what actually clips everything together. This holds it up in place into the uh, correct spot. And then they're simply just tap the back of the pin in with a hammer that holds it in place. So when it comes time for a brake pad change, you tap the front of the pin out, and then you can slide the pads up through the top of the caliper. I really love this setup actually, versus having to take the old caliper off to remove brake pads. So what I like to do is get one side in first, and then it has this retaining clip that kind of pushes the brake pads and puts pressure on the brake pads to hold them up, um, which is sliding in right here. So I put one pin in first, and then you could push down the other end of the tab down firmly, and then slide the pin in place on the other side of the pads. All right, so yes, it really is that simple. Pretty easy, guys. If you can use some common tools, um, this thing bolts up, no problem. Let's talk real quick about wheel choices. Obviously, you're not gonna be able to fit a 15-inch uh, or 14-inch uh, Mustang wheel on here. So forget your tin holes, forget your ponies, um, probably forget your even aftermarket 17-inch ponies as well. Some 17-inch wheels will fit, absolutely, but it's not so much the diameter you have to worry about. The diameter of this thing is fairly large, but it does hug the rotor fairly well. What you have to worry about is how absolutely massively wide these things are. Now, I've got FR500 wheels on my 86 back here to give you a reference here on how much space there is between a Cobra caliper and a Brembo. I've heard the 17-inch FR500 wheels do fit, but I'll be running 18-inch uh, wheels on this anyways so keep that in mind this absolutely does affect your wheel choice guys do this before uh, you fit your wheel choices and make sure that these will fit your brembo style brakes from maybe a uh, cobra r or something like that the factory ford brembo kit that came with the cobra r's uh, make sure they fit those and you'll ought to be pretty close getting these things fit as well so obviously you can sand these down you can paint whatever color you want you can put the brembo logo on them you can leave them black hell you can leave cadillac on it if you really wanted to just to throw people off it's completely up to you. Um, you can scuff this and sand it and paint it or even have them stripped down and powder coated. So limitless options. Let me show you what I'm thinking about doing. This is just a mock-up here. But what I've got here is what could be a decal. Now it's just printed out for my printer, but this is gonna be the actual size here. Um, I've measured it out. It's got the Brimbo logo and it's got Eagle Bruise, which is the name of the car across here. So I'm thinking about getting this done in a red decal. Of course, just the lettering, not the white. Um, on a satin black caliper. So I'm thinking about doing the caliper satin black, close to what it is now, it's actually a really cool color now. And then um, doing the Eagle Brews uh, logo here in red lettering. Also, I forgot to mention that we'll be running a standard Cobra booster with a one inch bore master cylinder along with most likely your standard Cobra rear brake. Now I talked to Chris from SNS Engineering and asked him, you know, if what's the proper setup for this. And he actually said that this is what most people run, they have no problems with it. Is your standard one inch board master cylinder, Cobra brake booster, or hydro boost of some sort, and standard rear SN95 or Cobra style disc brakes in the back as well. All right, man, that's a wrap. 
See how easy it is? It's easy. Hell, if I can do it, anyone can do it. Our little 1979 EcoBoost Coupe project here, Project Eagle Brews, is moving along. And um, guys, we got so much more videos coming. Next video, I think we're gonna be test fitting uh, the engine and transmission together and possibly even putting into the car. I've got all the clutch stuff in. We're gonna be putting a T5 behind the EcoBoost motor. And guess what? We're gonna put it in the car. It's gonna get into the car and actually become something so that we can start set, you know, test fitting, you know, radiator, intercooler, piping, battery, wires, fuel, yada, 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 yada. The list goes on and on. And then we'll take it all out and paint the car, put it all back in. It's gonna be rad, it's gonna be awesome. Hey, listen, if you like the content, please subscribe. It helps me out significantly. These videos do take time, believe it or not. That helps me out tremendously. And also follow me on Instagram. On Instagram, you're gonna see all the stuff that I'm doing well before um, it even comes to on a video so you're gonna get a whole bunch of um, inside information on kind of stuff. some of the stuff we're doing you also contact me if you have any questions that way as well so that's pretty cool but also check out house doula.com house doula.com is a collaboration of everything for social media into one spot you got the YouTube videos there the Facebook group page and Instagram feed and anything else I may want to put on my page okay it's cool check it out hey keep rinsing on rinsing keep wrenching on your Fox bodies guys don't stop keep at it Whittle away. Whittle away your project, okay? Slowly it'll come together, man. Uh, that's it, man. Y'all take care. We'll see you guys next time.